Hello everyone, it is Monday. It's good to be back. I hope that you had a great weekend. We had a very steamy weekend here and another week of steamy weather up ahead. I had finished 1 Thessalonians last week and so I'm beginning on 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And I believe that I can get through this chapter as it is pretty uh, shorter in comparison. So I'm going to get right into it. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and it starts off with greetings from Paul. This letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica, to you who belong to our God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. So not only is this letter to the Thessalonica people, it is to us also because scripture has been preserved by the will of God. And so when we read this, this message is also to us and the promises therein. And so he's praying that we would have grace and peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do. So continuing on, it says encouragement during persecution. All right. So verse three, dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing we proudly tell god's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness in all the persecutions and hardships you are suffering so basically this is you know a church that has been strong in the persecutions and um uh, hardships and trials that they have been enduring and that is a positive thing we don't want a weak church we want a strong church so when I say church, I am usually speaking um, about the church universal, meaning all people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they make up the universal church. And then, of course, we have the breakdown of local churches, okay? So we don't want a weak local church, and we don't want a weak universal church. And I believe that churches in certain parts of the world are stronger than other parts of the world. I think the westernized church has become extremely weak, um, embarrassingly so. Um, we have, you know, believe in stuff that tickles our ears of what we want to hear instead of what the Word of God says. So it's really a shame and it's really an embarrassment. And so we need to get back to biblical principles and standing firm regardless of what society says, okay? It, it doesn't matter what society says, it matters what God says. So we, I believe, are going to f uh, face more and more persecutions, trials, and we need endurance for it. Um, this has ra rarely been the case for Christians in the United States or the Western world, but it is really coming. I'm seeing more and more articles and news stories day by day that show persecution of believers. So we must stand strong. And how do we do that? By remaining close to Christ and in the word of God. So continuing on, it says, and God will use these persecutions to show his justice and to make you worthy of his kingdom for which you are suffering. Suffering, persecution, trials, and hardships make us better people. Even in things that are non-biblical, like biblical, so to say, God uses hard times in our lives and to teach us a lesson. And it is good for us if we get through it. I can name a bunch of experiences in my life where they were incredibly difficult you know, just totally stressful, but I can look back and see how God used those situations to mature me, to, you know, um, encourage me, strengthen me, maybe discipline me. So basically they are for our good. When God says that he works out all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Okay. So he will work out even the worst things. Okay. And then in six, it says, in his justice, he will pay back those who persecute you. And that's why uh, in the previous chapter, we had talked about when it said, do not return evil for evil. And I was making a distinction in that. So God will get back at those who persecute you in some way, shape or form. And his way is the best way. Okay. 
And then in seven, and God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. So when will we have rest? When the Lord Jesus returns from heaven. Expect tribulation, expect trials here on earth, okay? We should not be shocked. Jesus said that we would have these things, so don't be surprised. Be prepared. Every day is a battle. We have to put on the full armor of God and stand firm against the wiles of the enemy, the devil, and his minions, the other demons. Okay, so basically he will provide rest, and it will be a wonderful rest in paradise with Christ when he returns. So cling to that. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. People who go, I don't want anything to do with God. I don't believe in him. I don't want anything to do with him. I don't want anything to do with Christianity. He is going to bring judgment to those people because they are openly rejecting him. We have a choice. He, they are openly rejecting him, okay? Then uh, they will be punished with eternal destruction, okay? Um, forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. So when people come up with this idea that hell um, is not a thing or that, which is totally unbiblical, it's completely spoken of in the Bible very clearly and what it's, and what it's like, which is, um, you know, we can't even imagine how much worse it probably is, that um, this place is reserved for judgment for people who hate God and um, don't want anything to do with him. And if you think about this, and I've said this analogy before, God is a God of justice. We would think we will, we go off when we hear about judges in some of these states that a murderer killed someone and then they let them out on no bail or they have these new things where there's no bail and all this kind of stuff. And we are outraged because we as human beings expect justice. It is within us that we want justice. We want wrongs righted. So why should we expect less from the king of all the world? Okay, um, he is meeting out justice. And we Christians are not having the justice that we deserve of wrath of God because of Jesus Christ. Um, and he has, um, you know, paid for our sins. So we will not experience the wrath of God. So thank God for that. Um, so then going on, it says, um, they will be punished with eternal destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. When he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people, Christians, Praise from all who believe us, and this includes you, for you believed we told what we told you about him. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call, because we have a calling on our lives. Every single person who knows the Lord has a calling on their life, okay? That calling, first and foremost, is to worship the Lord and um, get to know him better and basically love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it is serving him in whatever capacity that he wants you to do and sharing the gospel, being ministers of reconciliation, okay? And then it goes on to say, may he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. So we shouldn't try it in our own power. We should always just ask for strength from the Lord and he will give it, okay? Then the name of the Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live and you will be honored along with him. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. So basically, God is honored when we live a life that is worthy of our calling and then we also get honored uh, because, uh, first of all, you know, we're living that life and God is empowering us to make a difference in the world. So all praise goes to God. So um, that is the end of the chapter. And I will just comment one more thing about hell and about this specific verse. 
when it says, they will be punished with eternal destruction, forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. So even people right now who do not know the Lord are enjoying God's presence in a sense because they're in a beautiful world, a beautiful creation, seeing beautiful images, experiencing love from God, whether they know it or not. He provides for them. He sends the sun and the rain and all the blessings in their lives. Children are a gift from the Lord. Uh, so they are enjoying the benefits of the Lord without really knowing him. So even though they're spiritually separated from them, this is the most experience of God that they will have if they reject him. And they could have so much more. And so when it comes time for the judgment, we all die and then face the judgment. If you are saved, you are eternally with the Lord Jesus Christ in paradise like he told the thief on the cross if you are not then you are a place sent to a place called hell where you are eternally separated from the lord so nothing good is there there is absolute absence of the presence of the lord which in itself would be totally grievous because we don't realize how much of the wonderful things of life that we are experiencing we'll never experience those things if we were sent there there will be no love there. There is no happiness there. There's no joy there. So why would anyone want to go there? Yet in Revelation, it talks about people railing against God, saying terrible blasphemous things, uh, blasphemous things about the Lord and not wanting anything to do with them. It's their choice. They've made, they've sealed the deal. Okay. Now everyone has a chance to repent all the way up to when you die. But the fact is, you don't know when you will die. So I hope that you take the opportunity immediately, if you don't know him, to come to Christ and ask him to forgive you of your, your sins, repent, turn to him, and your life will be transformed. You will never have to be worried about being separated from Christ or experiencing what the Bible describes as hell. So, um, and that is the good news of Jesus Christ. So I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I will see you with chapter two tomorrow.